let's take this, um, this new language and start to put it in forms that you already know because you've actually been dealing with functions for a long time, just haven't realized it, okay? Um, for instance, inputs and outputs, inputs and outputs. The classic name, the classic labels we give to our inputs and outputs are x and y, right? x is usually our input and y is usually our output. So, what you've got here is y as a function of x. y as a function of x. So, the way I'm going to write that is like so. Um, I'm going to use this one. y is a function of x. Okay, so like I said, we're repurposing old notation, these brackets, for this new purpose. Yeah? It's the it's the same the other way around, isn't it? Like x is a function of y. Ah, no. We'll talk about when you start to reverse things. Um, in some cases, yes, but in some cases, no. And in fact, this example, mm, we might not do it today because of the time, but in this example, no. Um, in fact, only for this example. Why is that? We will explain. Why? Okay. Ah, see what I did there? Okay, now, um, why is a function of x? Now, I, they haven't given you any, like, you know, markings or anything like that. I have no idea where this is. Let's just, for the sake of our understanding. Let's just slap some numbers on here, okay? So for instance, if that was negative 1 and that was 2, what might the equation of this parabola be? What might it be? It's got roots at negative 1 and 2. So when you factorized it, the factorization would have been something like x plus 1. That's what would give you this solution. And x minus 2. That would have given you both these roots. So just Play pretend with me. Let's just write that in. Okay, so what does this notation mean, right? Y isn't just another number. It's the name of a function that has X's in it. Okay, so this is my function and my name for it is Y. That's the label I'm putting on. Okay, now think with me. Does this, does this fit our definition of, well firstly does it fit the definition of a relation? Yeah, it does. These numbers are completely linked together, right? If you know something about y, you'll know something about x. Let's think about the next thing. Is it a function? Does each input have exactly one output? No. Does each, careful, does each, uh, this is the kind of thing. Does each x have exactly one y? No. Hmm. Now let's just do a bit of an experiment, okay? Let's think about some of the x's. Let's take an x, for instance. If I take an x like, uh, x equals minus 1. Okay, x equals minus 1. What kinds of values could y possibly have? What kind of options are there for x equals minus 1? The answer is there's only one option, right? When you put x equals minus 1 into here, this turns into 0. I don't care what this is anymore. It'll be 0, which is why it's a root. Okay? Um, for this particular one, let's try another value. How about x equals 0? That's an input. What output might I get from that? from x equals 0. Looks to me when I put it in here, it'll become 0 plus 1, which is 1, times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. That's just negative 2. I might as well put that in. How many outputs have I got for my one input? Answer, I've just got one output, right? When I come over here at 2, I happen to get the same output, but that's OK. I only get one. Every input, in fact, has exactly one output. What would it look like if it didn't? Well, as it happens, I have one on the board, right? Uh, I'm going to skip this middle one for a second because it's a bit boring. Have a look at this circle down here, OK? Um, let's just make up some numbers. Let's call this, let's be really boring, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. What's the equation of that circle? x squared plus y squared equals, it's the unit circle, isn't it? Okay. Now, take a number, uh, take an input, like say x equals 0, x equals 0, there's a, an easy input to take. What output do you get when you pop x equals 0 into here? Let's just actually crunch the numbers, it's not hard, right? I'm going to get 0 squared plus y squared equals 1. You see, I've just done a straight substitution, are you okay with that? That's, I, I can ignore him. When I say y squared equals 1, what's the solution to that? I take the square root of both sides, but because it's squared, there are two numbers I can square, right? Plus or minus 1. And you can see where they are, in fact. Plus or minus 1. You see that? One input 
provides me two outputs, right? Do you see what's going wrong here? So this guy, there's still a relationship here. There's still a connection between the x's and the y's. It makes this beautiful shape here, right? But it's not a function. There isn't just one output for each input, okay? Sometimes you do get one output. Can you see there are two spots on the circle where I get exactly one? Yeah. Where are they? Where are they? What values of x give me only one? Uh, this spot here, x equals one, that's only got one solution, right? And x equals negative one also has only one solution. But even though there are some spots where the input has one output, I want every single spot to have one input, one output, okay? So therefore, this is not a function, okay? This is not a function. It's still a relation, it's just not the special kind of relation we're focusing on at the moment. This guy, on the other hand, this is a function. Okay, last one, the easiest one for last. Have a look at the middle one. Now using your intuition, does it seem like a function or not? Think about putting in some inputs. We'll finish this and then you can pack up. If I put in a value like x equals zero, I'm going to get that value, whatever it is, one output. If I put in a value like this, x equals whatever that root is, I'll get y equals zero. Again, one output. It works. Okay, so my conclusion is, here's a nice easy way to remember it. If you take your graph and a vertical line, okay, and you place your vertical line across the graph, like say, there. Okay? If what you have is a function, then wherever you move your vertical line, here, or here, or I'm destroying my graphs, or here, right, then you'll get one output, one point of intersection. Have a look at my circle, what happened? Two. I've got two. It's not a function, okay? And we call that the vertical line test. We're gonna continue looking at it on Thursday.